Hello again. Today's lecture is lecture 8.3, and the topic today is venial sin. So the outline for today's lesson, first we're examining the question, what is venial sin? Then we're looking at what are the requirements for venial sin? After that, we'll look at what are the effects of venial sin? And lastly, we'll answer the question, how do we get rid of venial sin? Okay, well now what exactly is venial sin? So let's work on our definition. Venial sin is a less serious offense against God. So if you recall from the previous lecture, mortal sin was a serious offense or a grave offense against God. So a venial sin is a less serious offense. So when we think about sin, uh, the way to conceptualize sin is to think of sin as a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, we have mortal sin, which are the serious sins. And then on the other hand, on the other end, we have venial sins, which are the less serious sins. And then in between those two opposite ends or poles are, uh, you know, more serious mortal sins than more serious venial sins. So the word venial, uh, not surprisingly, it comes from a Latin word and Latin word comes means easily pardonable, easily pardonable. So in other words, it can be easily forgiven. Okay, so venial just means easily forgiven. So a venial sin is not the same thing as an imperfection. Okay, uh, with an imperfection, think of an imperfection as a fault that arises from ignorance or weakness, okay? Whereas a venial sin, arises out of a bad will, okay? So the big difference here is that an imperfection is something that we uh, have because of some ignorance of ours or a weakness, but a venial sin is sinful because it involves a bad will, okay? What are the requirements for venial sin? Usually, most of the time, it's less grave matter. So this is something not in, the, not in the Ten Commandments. However, uh, it may also be grave matter as long as there's not full knowledge or there's not full consent, okay? So what this means is, let's say someone does something wrong, okay, that is a grave matter, but maybe they don't know that it's wrong, okay? So instead of making a moral sin, it then becomes a venial sin. or Let's say someone does something against their will, okay, something quite serious, but if they're doing it against their will, that means they don't have full consent, which means that it's not a mortal sin, it's just a venial sin, okay? So uh, what are some examples of venial sins? Uh, impatience might be one, or uh, telling white lies that don't harm anyone. Um, perhaps maybe procrastinating a little too much on homework or studying for a test. All right. What are the effects of venial sin? What does it do to us? Uh, first, it weakens the will. By that, we mean that it weakens our desire to do good. Okay. Uh, because it weakens the will, it then lessens the power to resist evil. So the more venial sins that we commit, the more that accumulate on our soul, the less likely we are to resist evil. Third, it makes it easier to fall into mortal sin. So it, what venial sin does is it kind of builds up these bad habits. And the more bad habits we have, the more likely we are to do even worse habits or worse things. Uh, number four, it deprives us of many actual graces. So what that means is that as the venial sins kind of build up on our soul, we are blocking the light from entering into our soul, okay? Uh, that's another way of saying that we are preventing actual graces from uh, occurring. How do we get rid of venial sin? Uh, the sacrament of penance is not necessary, but it is helpful. So yes, you are allowed to confess venial sins in the sacrament of penance, okay? You don't have to, but it doesn't hurt. Receiving the Eucharist, so if you receive the Eucharist at Mass, you will actually be uh, forgiven of your venial sins. If you make an act of contrition outside of the sacrament of penance, 
Now, uh, typically, we, we say the act of contrition when we are in confession with a priest, but let's say we commit a venial sin, you know, let's say we, you know, lose our temper and we, you know, yell at our parents or our brother or sister, okay? Now, you may feel bad afterwards because you, you lost your cool, and if you make an act of contrition right there and then over that venial sin, then it, it will be forgiven. Prayer. Prayer is absolutely essential to overcoming venial sin, okay? Because prayer is what fortifies us and makes us more inclined to do the will of God. And lastly, performing good works. So serving others, uh, performing acts of charity are a good way to get rid of venial sin because th those are what build up good habits. Now, one way to kind of think about venial sin, think of it as a, a drop full of ink and a glass full of clear water. Okay, so think of the clear water as our soul. And when we commit a venial sin, it's like dropping that little drop of ink. And that drop of ink may be very small and not very significant. However, even just the tiniest little drop of ink will slowly filter through that clear glass of water and slowly, gradually expand until it almost uh, muddies up the entire glass. Okay. Now, eventually, if you add more and more of these little droplets, more and more of these venial sins, that beautiful, pristine glass of water becomes a totally different color, okay? Uh, and that's, that's how venial sin makes it harder for us to receive actual graces. That's how venial sin makes it harder for us to do the will of God, okay? Because our soul has been so tarnished, okay? over the accumulation of these sins that it's harder to see clearly. It's harder to discern and think clearly about what God's will is and about what the good for us is. Okay, so that's why it's important to uh, express contrition for our venial sins and to ask for forgiveness of them, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, on our own or in the sacrament of confession. So that's it for venial sin today, and I'll see you next time.